Now let's get to the substantive issues, and it's about labor raising issues. And it's not only labor, gen the generality of the business community in Ghana, uh, captured under the umbrella of the Association of Ghana Industries, raising issues about the new tax handles that have been introduced by government. Of course, they've been approved. As a result of that, we now have what we call the growth and sustainability levy. We have the excise duty um, that are being paid now amended. They've increased. And some um, importers, etc., we pay more. For income tax, a certain bracket of earners would also be getting their share. Let's get some reactions. First, from Labour, then we'll continue with AGI, and then we'll come back and look at these issues. Just by a political fiat, Treasury bill rates were brought down. Yeah. Not because of demand and supply. Not the market uh, factors playing anything. It's just by a political fiat that we have Treasury bill rates come down. Just last week, policy rates have been increased. Businesses are now going to pay more. The excise tax and all the three taxes that we're talking about are all going to affect businesses. So there's going to be an, a state of economic malaise that is going to affect the people. They increase salaries by 30%. The next day, they increase uh, electricity tariffs by 29.9% and increase water by about some 15%. And now you bring in income tax. So where is the 30%? It's been eroded. If by the end of April we see a dip in our salaries, we don't have a choice than to advise ourselves. Increase in taxes has its own positive and negatives. And the negative effects of increment in taxes is that manufacturers, companies, I mean, who produce locally, when the tax burden is too much, the only effect or the only action they take is to reduce employment. So this one is going to affect employment. Management are going to lay off workers. Now, realistically, these are the items that will be captured. So, for example, for the, these new amendments, at least from C, we know that a beer, that's normal stout, and other and stout other than indigenous beers. So, we have um, for local raw material, less than that, accruing and some taxes as well. And for me, I always say, apart from the ciders, etc., we have many of them that are also manufactured locally right here in our country. Akpateshi. Akpateshi. Apio. Apio has also been cut. Spirit including, in quotes, Akpateshi. And just take a look at it. Distilled or rectified, blended or compounded. And, the, and, and, the, and there's a fear, according to those in the business community, that we could have individuals illegally manufacturing these just to evade taxes. But I'm what do you make of this? And the agitations of labor as well as those in the business community. Well, I think that... Uh, <coughs> <coughs> I think that this is what we bargain for as Ghanaians. How do you mean? Um, if you go and bring an insect infested um, plant into the house, you are certain that you will have lizards following you all the time because they will have to come and pluck. And so the people of Ghana chose this government and we chose a government of highly extreme arrogance, pomposity, and simply I don't careism. From the president to all his appointees, or majority of his appointees, the abrupt and arrogance mm. cannot be compared. We have come to a situation where we have economic dictatorship instituted and delivered by the Minister for Finance, mm. whose stewardship has seen that Ghana has been permitted into the worst ever economic circumstances 
that this nation could ever come to. Obviously, this Minister for Finance hates what we call public consultation or consensus on any matter. And he thinks, and any time he thinks or dreams, he comes to the public and to want to manifest his narrow beliefs as the solution to the problems of this country. It is such mentality that led him to start to shout that we will not go to IMF today, we will not go to IMF tomorrow. It is such mentality that led him to organize a Ikenkik party at the Ministry of Finance to celebrate the so-called um, exit of Ghana from the IMF. And when he went round, he said that in order, and this was echoed by one of your colleagues, a journalist, Kojo Nkrumah, who said that in order that we don't go to the IMF, we needed to bring about electronic TV levy. TV, my choice. Because the transfer is not true. They are stealing our savings. And so Kojo Nkrumah said that to avoid going to the IMF, mm -hmm. and you ask why are we avoiding going to the IMF? Because you plunge the nation into this economic calamity. It was not our choice. It was your de decision, willingly, to lead us onto a path of overborrowing. So much that you cannot go outside there to go and raise further capital to support the kind of projects we want to embark on. Because the international community decided that they will not patronize Ghana bond, bonds, then the issue of where do we get money from? You chose with your narrow economic thinking that why imposing tra transfer charges on people's savings, if you do transfer from your bank, to somebody, mobile money, they will charge you. If you even do transfer from your bank to another person, they will charge you. If you take money from your mobile money and I just want to remit you, they will charge you. Even as I am to pay a debt or something, they will charge you. And so in my opinion, they are stealing from you anytime you embark on any electronic transaction. Electronic transactions are supposed to be cheaper, and they are supposed to be incentivizing people to patronize the services so as to move away from cashful society to a cashless society. Unfortunately, people now prefer to carry cash because of your bankrupt policies and ideas. And so you pushed us into this limit. Now, when you brought your electronic transfers levies or TV levy, we warned you that it was not something to rake in the so-called anticipated revenues that you predicted. Mm. We told you about the difficulties in raising and realizing that amount. You ignored us. Your ignoring us was not based on the fact that you thought we were wrong. It was simply arrogance and pomposity that you cannot capitulate on something you have dreamt about. And so that is where it landed us. So the electronic transfers levies, even as it is, is exacting hardship on many people, it's a fiasco because it's unable to raise the needed revenue that you want. Eventually, we are landed at the IMF and the World Bank. In landing at the IMF and World Bank, the many things that we told you to do and you refused to do, the IMF has compelled you, and now you want to do them. In wanting to do them, there is a need for you to engage broader stakeholders as to how we'll be able to come out from your created economic mess. You are there. We wake up one day, you would let president go and announce that there will not be haircut. Then we tell you that when we say haircut, you only grow hair before it can be cut. If you don't grow hair, you can cut. To that it means that if I put my money and the money has not grown, you don't take anything out of the money, right? So once I put up an investment, as soon as you start chopping onto how my principal is affected, it means that you have even gone beyond haircut. This one to the Minister for Finance was oblivious. He didn't know about it. President announced there will not be haircut later. It has to take Minister for Information to come and tell us that the President English or economics was not right, and that this is actually what the President meant, that our principles will not be affected. You understand? Moving forward, that haircut came. You did the domestic debt exchange program. 
without consulting the debt owners. Mm. You imposed it on them. The external debt, you cannot do that, and so you needed to do consultation. All of a sudden, when the IMF is asking you to expand your revenue outlets, your thinking is that to expand revenue outlet means that you should increase taxes and exacerbate the hardship confronting the people of Ghana. So I'm not surprised. If you look at the litany of problems and challenges that the business community is already facing from hyperinflation of excess of 50%, 52, 54%, to 52%, uh, 52% to um, uh, unstable exchange rates, mm -hmm. to the fact that interest or um, interest rates at the banks is nearly 30%, to the fact that electricity cost has gone up, everything has pushed the cost of production in this country even, up. Even in some, in, in some institutions, it, it, higher. They understand. As as so, so you sit here, and then all of a sudden, they are increasing common income tax. Value-added tax has been increased to nearly 22%. And you go out to purchase with your static and stagnant income. What it simply means that net effect is that your income. Worse is that today, for the first time in history, gross profit is going to be taxed. Hmm. <laughs> the, uh, Dr. Ayer, yeah. critical at this point is the communication from government yeah. that um, so-called, we need to have and bring everybody on board. And your side has been criticized heavily. Your side on the, of the political divide, both in the political space yeah. and then in parliament yeah. for not supporting government. Yeah. Do you think this needs to be supported? Of course not. Uh, let me first of all commend the gallant 136 minority uh, members in parliament mm. for their implicable opposition to this obnoxious taxes, um, which will essentially re uh, uh, rake in about 4 billion Ghana cities, which we have already had in 100 folds. What will these 4 billion Ghana cities do for the people of Ghana? Already, they are not able to account for the billions of Ghana cities, billions of dollars the country has given to them. Why should we support this? You see, Roland, this constitutes nothing but last minute tactics of a dying government that is desperate enough to clutch on straws. A government that has wasted the fortunes of the people of Ghana for the past seven years through very extreme levels of corruption misapplication of funds, reckless dissipation of mega resources of our country. And that is why we are seeing the spectacle we are seeing today. Other than that, there is absolutely no reason why these taxes should be brought. Um, I share in the concerns raised by Guta and uh, the other trade unions and civil society organizations. Mm. Including AGI. Oh, yes. Of course, the for Ghana Chamber of Commerce and mm, yes. all of them, yes. all of them, yes. Of course, for um, I mean, they are, they, they are concerns about the repercussions of um, these new taxes. These new taxes. It does appear to me that this government is in sixes and sevens about how they will salvage this country from the economic abyss that they have plunged the people of Ghana into, and so have tried as much as possible to. Uh, rule on all retrogressive means of generating revenue. That is why we are where we are today. Now, unfortunately, after expropriating the, in, uh, the investments of the people of Ghana, the vice president, who is the economic management, head of economic man management team, has finally put a nail to the coffin. He is saying that from today, <laughs> he is taking or is increasing the taxes on mineral water, the normal water we drink, from 17.5% to 20%. Non-alcoholic beverages, that is normal sugary fizzy drinks we take, he is increasing the taxes from 17.5% to 20%. He's also taking 1% on the outings for the extractive sectors. It is instructive to note that this idea of taxation was mooted in the office of Dr. Baumia. How do you come to that conclusion? I am reliably informed about that. 
There is no doubt about it. Roland, this is unacceptable. Now, the idea behind this is to rake in revenue. Now, you are increasing production costs. What it means is that many people are not going to patronize the product. The companies are going to lose revenue. People are not going to buy the products. So you are not going to get the revenue like what you did to E-Levy. The big diatribe as far as the economics is concerned. Exactly. Mm. Again, we in the minority have also raised concerns about how it will bring untold hardships on the people of Ghana. Because already, these companies are going to lose revenue. There's going to be reduced production, low patronage. And these companies will be forced to lay off the very few young people who are lucky to get employed. Already, just about a month ago, over 1,500 young men have been laid off in the construction sector because the government is failing to pay contractors. Currently, unemployment rate in this country is about 13.6%. Mm. And a sharp increase from 5.6% in 2016. So you, this government, you are not building anything. You are not building the economy. You are not expanding the company, the, the country. You are not setting up any businesses. But when private people set up businesses, you want to collapse it. Why? How should this be accepted? Well, they will raise the issue about this being one of the key conditions that the IMF needs. Roland. How is that? <clears throat> Go and expand your revenue sources. That's not mean increasing taxes. Yeah, but let, let him finish. You see, you see Roland, mm. the MPP has bungled so many opportunities. Look at the number. You mean they've had so many opportunities? Look at the them. amount of resources the people of Ghana have given them. What they have gotten up to now is about 10 times what previous government from Nkrumah to 2016 have got. And Roland, this government is the most unprincipled government I have seen as a young person. As far as these taxes are concerned, the president, Nanado Danko Kufuado, is known to have organized tens of thousands of young people onto the streets of Accra to demonstrate against VAT. Mm. In that demonstration, a handful of young people died. The Kumi Preko demonstration. Yes, the mean? infamous Kumi Preko demonstration. Only for him to come to power and superintend over the most obscene form of taxation ever witnessed in this country. But Dr. Ayer, we need this money. No, no, no. You can develop a country, but you should develop a country sensibly, not to collapse businesses. He alone has introduced over 24 taxes. From 2017, he introduced a 3% VAT flat rate. He introduced a 5% increase in VAT. He introduced a 5% uh, national uh, uh, fiscal stability levy. He introduced a 2% special import levy. He introduced the uh, luxury vehicle taxes. He increased uh, communication taxes by 50%. So many taxes. Mm. E levy, COVID-19 levy, sanitation levy. And you are concluding that it's, they are obnoxious? They are completely obnoxious. Dr. Baumia, who is the head of economic management team, also took to social media and made very bewildering claims against the NDC that the NDC was imposing taxes, even taxes that were supposed to clear debt in our energy sector. They didn't only scrap it, they increased it and even collateralized it for loans. And those loans are swallowing the country by way of the interest payment that we are supposed to honor. Mm. How can we accept this? When President Kufado was flying president, uh, luxurious presidential address, when he was appointing or he was creating mushroom appointments in the presidency. Didn't the people of Ghana advise him? Yeah. When he was borrowing billions of Ghana cities, didn't we advise him? And now the ordinary Ghanaian who knows next to nothing about this is the one supposed to bear the brunt about these taxes. I think it's unfair. And I'm calling on the vice president, Nanado Danko Kufado, to immediately suspend these taxes. Well, they've been approved by parliament. Um, I think critical uh, um, are this. Um, are the issues that are relevant to the discussion. And it's about why we need this to go to the IMF. And so um, at the end of the period, um, we'll need these taxes and we'll have to go to parliament with it.
Uh, we've been joined by OPK uh, Davis Opoku. And um, Davis, we're told that these new tax handles that we've been, we've been asked um, to bed in share mm. would increasingly impoverish the ordinary Ghanaian. What's your own reaction to it? Well, first, let me say good morning to our viewers and also uh, to apologize for my late coming. I mean, uh, it's raining. That is, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's raining, oh. so we'll forgive you. <laughs> it's not my fault. And also to get. He lives far. The key wish chief. He's in, in Prizo. Uh, well, yeah, arguably, I mean, if, if, if you have um, organized groups in this country um, complaining about the recent um, revenue. Uh, You've heard some bills. of them, right? AGI. Yeah, of course, I've heard it. Oh. TUC. I've always maintained that nobody will be happy if government decides to introduce new taxes or to even increase taxes. I mean, you will not have the ordinary man on the streets rejoice because government have decided that I'm introducing a new tax. So certainly, um, if there's some reaction to the increment in taxes, mm. um, for me, I, I think it's, it's, um, it's a normal practice, uh, especially somebody who have led several demonstrations in this country. And um, uh, I believe that when people express themselves, they should be given the opportunity to do the same. I mean, um, I always believe that um, organizing press conferences and going on demonstration and all of that uh, is a valve that the Constitution creates so that people can uh, freely express themselves. But that said, these three new taxes um, are what I call the necessary taxes, especially if we would want to um, um, be able to secure an IMF facility. Mm. We all know that um, when the IMF came to Ghana, mm -hmm. they proposed certain measures. Um, and these measures were aimed at um, putting Ghana on some financial path, um, a path that would ensure that we have a lot of revenue, um, and, and, and in doing so, uh, they proposed these uh, debt exchange programs, both domestic and external. We were very successful with the domestic one. Mm -hmm. We did about 86% with the domestic exchange program. Um, so luckily for us, China uh, have relatively accepted our proposal, the Paris Club have done the same. Yes, of course, I mean, you have we, um, concrete information that China is back in. I, what, I, what I can tell you is that the negotiations, the negotiations um, has been very, very fruitful. And, um, well, my chief says that it's not true. Maybe chief has you a lot of information. So. So. But, 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 but I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming. Mm. So, <clears throat> clearly, these are all measures that the government and the IMF set out to, 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 to place Ghana on that path. And of course, um, these <coughs> three new bills were critical, especially in securing some about four billion uh, to support um, our domestic economy. And, and, and it's something that uh, Ghanaians must brace themselves up. We need to be, 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 be assured that these are revenues that are coming in to ensure that the development that we all seek from government is, 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 I mean, seen. I mean, so I can understand if people are complaining. But that said, um, the MPP government is not the first government to introduce new taxes. But you promised prior to 2017 that you're going to move <coughs> Ghana from taxation to production. Perhaps maybe if we can do a recall of the vice president, you, have, you haven't seen that the video, so we can play that to you. Oh, oh, well. And the alternative to is, if you know that... Say you want, you, to, you want to play the video, but if you say I've not seen that video, I think it's, it's quite unfair to me. Have you seen the video? He was part of it. Uh, I'm surprised. He was not there. 
Now, 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 now uh, Mr. Pukwansam, there's a, a critical argument that has been made by AGI and the rest of the, of the team that are raising these concerns, mm. that government is not willing to reduce its expenditure. Because if you know that you spend 10 and you even have a deficit, and before you go and borrow 20, mm. the entity you're going to borrow from is saying that, show me. Mm -hmm. how you be able to pay your deficits and then look at how you be able to manage as far as your liabilities are concerned mm. before I give you the 20 mm. to give you the space for you to go into the market and do what you have to do. So reduce your expenditure. Government has not been willing to concretely and evidentially reduce its expenditure. What, what do you say to that argument? So what, 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 what is it that you expect government to do? Because, I mean, somewhere early part of this year, I think last, I think last year, and there was an announcement that uh, government had cut some 30% of its... Uh, appointees. Uh, uh, not appointees. So, so for you, the challenge is with appointees. No, it's not about appointees. It's uh, 30% of... No, I understand. Of I mean, people make complaints that government needed to uh, reduce... My, uh, no. Government needs to reduce... It's uh, not a position I hold. It's a question. It's a question. It's not a position. You no, hold. no, no. I don't hold that position. For instance, the recent appointment by President and it's a question. Pufuado, mm. Out of the six um, uh, uh, appointees, five of them are members of Parliament. We're not talking necessarily about appointees. Let's get this straight. But that, that's what you just mentioned. No, no, appointees. No, 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 oh, no, Roland. No, no, no. That is what you just no, said. No, you said that there's been a cut. And I'm saying that you refer, referring to the thirty percent that we're saying because well, if you listen to the German ambassador, what he d does say does the German is that German ambassador decide for Ghana. Oh, is that is that is that the mood of communication? It is not the mood now of communication. Why would you want to reference the German ambassador? Uh, because and not even you are going the, to what, them uh, to Bernard go and Mr. 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 Pukwansa, the, the, they are saying, and this is not only the German ambassador, uh, uh, um, Kwame Pienim, all of them saying. Look, reduce or even stop some of the social intervention policies like or what? programs. Like what? You want government to put you a stop to free parliament. SHS? Is that what you are saying? I haven't, I haven't said that. I'm asking, so you, I'm what, asking a question. So what, what they are saying reduce revenue, and I'm saying that what do you say to that? And, and I'm telling you that which of the revenues? Somebody says that government must reduce its expenditure. Government's re expenditure. Yes, reduce expenditure. That's yes. what it's so saying. So government's expenditure is basically what comes to us as citizens. So payment of salaries, if you look at our budget, relatively, I mean, a chunk of our budget goes into payment of salaries, servicing debt, and also providing infrastructure that are needed for the development of our country. Now, major flagship programs like the free SHS, mm -hmm. planting for food and jobs, which is ensuring that there's food security in our country. All the major crops, but for rice, saw a surplus last year just because of the planting for food and jobs. It tells you the re returns in the investment government does in the sector. Mm. Uh, free SHS. Today, there are persons in my constituency who hitherto could not afford to enter into secondary school, but because of free SHS, today they are in the universities, uh, 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 um, and, and, uh, I mean, studying, and would become very prominent people in our country. So which of the pro-poor policies do you think government should? And I can understand. I mean, that has been the language. And of course, in 2015, when the NDC decided to go to the IMF, there were certain pro-poor policies, like the, 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 the nurse, nursing training allowance that they cut off, the teacher training allowance, they ended it. So we can understand if the chorus is that uh, the MPP government must do the same. But that, for me, is a difference between the MPP and the NDC, the commitment of Nana Kufuado to continue the pro poor policies is one thing that we must all be appreciative of. So for me, the decision is ours. That is why we voted for the MPP and we voted for Akufuado to govern. So he is there to ensure that the pro poor policies that he went around this country told Ghanaians should be maintained, irrespective of the difficult moments that we find ourselves. And of course, we are hoping and praying that at least uh, uh, um, um, by next week, the IMF uh, at this sitting in Washington may want to consider our proposals. If that is not done, hopefully by May, 
we should be expecting a facility from the IMF, which will come in $3 billion, will come in to cushion uh, our, 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 our economy. But of course, he said the vice president promised that we're going to move from taxation to production. And we're on the path of doing that. Go and look at the trade, uh, 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 the export uh, sub surpluses that was experienced last year. Which of the numbers have you been looking at? Is it your own numbers? So we're talking about numbers from what, the Bank what of numbers, Ghana. What numbers do you because have? Because your own numbers that you report just don't support. If you take a look Which at... Which number? If you, if you take a look at what the budget says by way of what our liabilities are, what we have to pay on what we've already expended, that is why we are before the IMF. So yeah. why do you say that policies have become um, positive and so the indicators are showing? You see, if you, if you take the budget, so the budget has the revenue bit and the expenditure bit. Yeah, sure. Of course, the revenue bit is where we have had difficulties as a people. And it is largely because of the effect of COVID-19 on our local economy. I have always used my household as an example. I have a mother who visited Nigeria, I mean, would go to Nigeria to uh, uh, bring in wares to sell on the market. Now, COVID-19 came. My mother is unable to travel. And that, that means that a business has slowed down and the revenues that the state would generate when she brings in her wares has also gone down. So that is a typical example of the effect that we went through as a people. But that said, people were still being paid. I mean, people sat in the house, companies had to uh, ration, um, <coughs> there was, um, even schools got closed down and all of that, but government needed to run. I'm not too sure there's any government worker in our country who would come out and suggest that during the difficult moments when the person was at home, government did not pay them. Government continued to do that. So certainly, if you continue to exp uh, 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 spend, when the revenue is not really coming, then there's an effect which affects you. Unless, unless, unless we want to adopt the NDC's approach of cutting down on certain things when we are in difficult moments. But that's not what the MPP believes in believes that what we, whatever we are going through now is temporary. And, and that is why you go for a facility from the IMF and would want to, uh, I mean, uh, 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 invest in your economy to ensure All right. that. Bernard Bonner, um, how do we relate this? Because we've introduced so-called pro-poor policies, policies for planting for food and jobs, one district, one factory, etc. I'm thinking in my own little economics knowledge, it should reflect in the numbers. Um, we get the revenues, we're putting line items, which the very Britain Wood institutions and the multilateral partner are telling us, please drop them. Because it's an opportunity cost, is that not it? Well, um, I never got the impression that the Association of Ghana Industries it's a wing of the National Democratic Congress. And I never also got the impression that the Ghana Union Traders Association that in 2016 contributed about 200,000 to support the Nanado's campaign could suddenly be a wing of the National Democratic Congress. Or did I get the impression that the Chamber of Commerce and Industry could also be a wing of the National Democratic Congress or the Trade Unions Congress, to which, Roland, you and many other members belong to. Sitting here this morning and listening to my brother David's answer, mm. he puts it that anything that is said against the obnoxious taxes that are in place it is coming from the National Democratic Congress. And I sit here as a non-member of the National Democratic Congress and a bona fide member of the PNC. I find this not only insulting, but an attack on our integrity. 
the people that are complaining about the high taxes that are of no consequence to promoting the business environment are saying this because of the negative impact it will have on commerce and industry. They are saying this because it will have negative consequences on their lifestyles and their way of living. Roland, sitting here and including him, including him, David, that as soon as the income tax brackets are increased, without a corresponding increase in your, in, uh, your, your, your personal earnings, what it means is that it has deflated your net pay. And so when you see the rising cost in every sector, you go and buy beverages, you go and buy things for occasions, and when your income is not able to meet it, you have to shrink. And that is what industry players are saying, that these taxes you have brought in, the options are just very clear. Either we shrink the size of our companies and our businesses, and in shrinking the size, it means that your targeted revenue will not come. Because if the business size is shrinked, what it means is that they will not be producing at optimum capa capacity. Mm. There will be layoffs. And above all, the rate at which they even go to take credit is excessive. Then all I hear this morning is that no, this is a partisan thing that must always be blamed between the NDC the, and the MPP. Let's look at it holistically beyond the partisan spec. I'm surprised. Uh, uh, Can I? Oh, please. Oh, him. Him. Can I? Can I? No heckling. I'm not heckling. Okay, I mean, that's what you're doing. Please go so, ahead. So I am very worried about this kind of <coughs> posture that we put across when it comes to the defense of our, our issues. Look, you have messed the economy. You have simply caricatured the economy. OPK, you have friends who are contractors. Some are owed just 100,000, 200,000. They are not paid, right? They have, students, they have kids who are in school, and that is the only work they do. They have families to take care of. You have not paid these people. And then from nowhere, you are increasing taxes that will make their lives even more unbearable. And in doing so, just watch the headlines. You can say, my life was less important than the passage of the three new taxes. That is the Nantong MP. That when he even suffered, he suffered an accident that everybody should have compassion. A government that has no compassion had to maul him to go and support so that they can pass. That is, that is one of you. You can see the bitterness. It's not right that anything that you oppose, the kind of forata that you say that unless data bankers are read from the Ministry of Finance, the independence of Ghana is meaningless. Who said it? He, 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 he. When did he say I, it? I did, I did. He did. Yes. That data bankers are still occupying the financial sector of this economy, running and misapplying things that will bring about solution. Instead of you to say that, look, the data bankers are the cause of our problems from the Ministry of Finance. So what's the solution now? The solution is that, look, nobody, and I insist, that no country ever taxes itself to prosperity. Taxes can be used for many purposes, not just for revenue purposes. You use taxes to correct trade imbalances. In our case, that is not what we are doing. We use taxes to discourage the consumption of imported goods, and to encourage the, import, uh, the con consumption of locally made produce. That is not what these taxes are supposed to do. If you go to the port today, where we used to clear in excess of 300 containers, last Friday, Saturday, only nine containers were cleared. You know what is happening? Most people are now diverting their things to Benin, to Togo, and to, to uh, Ivory Coast so that their goods are cleared there. And event, they don't even bring them here because when they clear them there, they decide to sell them there. Even the little revenue you are getting from the ports, mm. because of excessive taxation, you are losing it. So what it means is that if you had brought your taxes at par with what is within the sub-region, you will still be getting the containers because most of these landlord countries prefer 
that they would take their containers from Ghana. Why are they now no, more, no long taking them here? That is because you have a minister for finance who does not understand that certain incentives lead to increased revenue. And so I am very amazed that my brother, who I thought that was strong in character and also supported the removal of Kendo Ferrata and others, who are the reasons for which we are in this economic uh, quagmire. You are here today trying to do a partisan uh, twist. Dr. Tai, in putting the icing on the cake, there's a critical issue here. Um, OPK here seems to be telling us whether we hope. We were told that January will get board approval, February will get board approval, March will get board approval. Now we are on a path of hope. At the end of the day, we will ultimately get it. Oh, you think so? Well, <laughs> even if it takes 10 months. But, but let how me just should... make a little no, point no, to that. No, 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 no. China, no, no. China, China you went there, how, your minister how, for finance said that the how, minister how, for finance of China gave you only how do one we, hour. Do, 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 one do, hour is how do, <laughs> how do we need to take uh, put you know, our house in order before, as we are with the IMF, how do we need to put our house in order, Dr. It's simple cut down expenditure. But before I get there, the questions you posed to Honorable David completely exposed the forces of the MPP's case. Davis. Honorable Davis, completely exposed the forces of the MPP's claim. Um, please, OPK is fine with him. Now, he's been OPK for years. If you want to see... Please, please, please. Let Dr. Ayer speak. If you want to see how unjustified these taxes are, look at the numbers. This MPP government in only seven years has generated over 820 billion Ghana cities in revenue as compared to John Mahama or the NDC government that accrued only 300 billion. But yet they are unable to show sector by sector what they have used these monies for. Now in taxes alone, in 2017, they had 33.6 billion. 2018, 39.1 billion. 2019, 45.6. 2020, 47.4. 2021, 57 billion. 2022, 75.1 billion. In total, in taxes alone, they have generated in excess of 298 billion. What is the corresponding there is a, there is an, a, There is an akandami, uh, uh, adage that say, apatami and say, timi ama unkwai anyada. Enye kusi abasa. Ah. To it, if you yeah. cannot prepare a sumptuous meal mm. with three fishes, mm. it is not the tie of a rat that will make it sweet. Mm -hmm. so the explanation or the reason why we are here, the reason why we are here is because this government has failed to respect the people of Ghana. They are unwilling to cut down expenditure. Mm. How can you allocate over 3.2 billion Ghana cities to the office of presidency alone? But you are not, you are not saying that... The last the expenditure that came from the presidency. Mm -hmm. This government allocated 4 million Ghana cities to replace car ties and batteries. Four, that is over 40 billion OCDs. They used 4.8 million Ghana cities for just a cabinet retreat of 20 people. How do you know it was 20 people? How many cabinet meetings do you have? Let's, let's see roughly around the, that, that number. That is over 48 billion OCDs. They use 50 million Ghana cities. That is 150 billion OCDs. Hmm? So your, your reference to so, OCDs, what does it, what does it do? This is just oh, honorable. Oh, 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 honorable. Oh, okay. So that you're, you're, you're heckling, honorable. please. Honorable. Go ahead, go ahead. Honorable. No, 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 honorable. When you Dr. Ayer, please go ahead. Go ahead. When you go to the office of presidency alone, okay, they have a communications director. You are heckling they, the young. They have a communication director. They have two deputy communication directors. They have a media advisor. They have they have a technical advisor to the media advisor. Okay, they have a spokesperson on governance, spokesperson on uh, uh, infrastructure, spokesperson on security. All these people are drawing down salaries. Recently, I heard they have a, a policy associate and overseer of National Cathedral, all drawing down salaries from the consolidated funds. But National Cathedral is a government policy. It's an initiative. Oh, Roland. School feeding caterers are up in arms that several months they have not been paid. Mm, mm, and you think, mm, as we sit here, mm. it's the National Cathedral that, that we need. 
when the president was flying luxurious jets, didn't he know that people would come and demonstrate mm, mm. about their monies? Mm. And so, Roland, it's simple that the MPP has failed to live up to expectation. And I have always maintained that if we take lies and falsehoods out of politics, the MPP will cease to exist. And so I am not surprised that Honorable Davis, or as he so wishes to be called, OPK, mm -hmm. is sitting on this big platform in the full glare of the public and churning out complete falsehoods, which are contrary to Dr. Baumier's claims when he was in opposition. He said he would move Ghana from taxation to production. Now production has dwindled and taxation or taxes have gone to the roof. So you're saying it's from taxation to more taxation? More taxation. No key people in the MPP. Asla Usu, what did she say? She said if governance is only about taxes, her 18-year-old daughter can govern. I think I was 17. 17. Mm. Where is the daughter now? You see, these are the issues confronting young people in this country. Are daughter, son? Son. There are no... 17. There are no factories. So seven years down the the economy is not being expanded. The country is on a standstill. Development has been stifled. So people are barely able to make ends meet. And so we are hoping that the people of Ghana come 2024 will choose, will choose a government that is more economically prudent, a government that is so compassionate, a government that will listen to the people and address the very fundamental needs of the people of Ghana. Thank you. Mm. No, but at the end of the day, is there any way that we can cushion AGI and some of these other institutions that are raising concerns about these taxes? You, you, you passed them. You saw some of them. I, I think they should continue to engage the uh, various uh, sector heads. Um, for instance, I know that uh, in terms of uh, support for businesses, I mean, this government has done enough. I mean, uh, today, the, really, you ask a question and I'm answering and you interject. I mean, when I do say, you say, I'm... I'm uh, Don't look at me to say I'm interjecting. <laughs> Continue oh, your story. Oh, no, please. Sorry. I'm saying that. Yes, please. So if, if you take, for instance, the Ghana Enterprises Agency mm. and this continuous support for MSMEs, clearly it tells you that government uh, is committed to supporting uh, businesses and all of that. So, um, uh, I mean, go There's to the Ministry. There's even Bank. Yes, go to the Ministry of Trade. Um, you know that under the 1D1F and um, uh, several interventions from the Ministry of Trade, I mean, through, through government's efforts, uh, there's been support for businesses in our country. But that said, um, I, I can understand my young doctor um, friend, my new friend that I found on TV3, because uh, it's the usual NDC chorus, chapter 3, verse 2, uh, where they end by saying that they should, they should, they should uh, select or vote for a new NDC government, which will be led by John Mahama. Is that the case? The same John Mahama that ended a lot of the pro-poor policies that, that, that we had in this country. Um, um, I'm, I'm surprised that they, 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 they will still want to trumpet that. But, like I mentioned, introducing new taxes certainly comes with some uneasiness. I mean, people are not comfortable with taxes. It brings a lot of burden. Mm. Uh, it means that you may have Did to Did you do stakeholder engagement before you, you, you introduce these taxes? No, well, because if you did, AGI and I'm Co. Not. wouldn't be con raising concerns. Well... We have the chamber also responsible for that, also raising concerns. I, I don't know much about it. Um, I don't know if the Ministry of Finance engaged. So you, you just sit in Parliament, pass the thing? It's not sit in Parliament and pass the thing. I mean, when you say that, it's like... Uh, because I'm asking you, so you don't know whether there was engagement. Because as a parliamentarian, you should ask, are there engagement no, with you, key stakeholders? That, that, that is not my role. Then what is your role? As a parliamentarian, mine is to look at the law and see if it is beneficial to the people. And I'll pass the law, I'll pass them. But of course, you, you, you have to engage. And I know there's a special committee for that, the Finance Committee of Parliament is responsible for engaging uh, 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 the constituents, I mean, to engaging Ghanaians largely. 
So to say that we just sat down and passed the law, for me, uh, it's, it's a bit demeaning. I mean, uh, it's, a, it's not a proper thing for you to say. But I can assure Ghanaians, their taxes are being uh, 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 used for for for, for when the you were when you were looking at the the motion itself, were, were, were you happy when the bill came? Were you happy? Well, I, I was happy because I want to get out of these old financial difficulties. Are you serious? Yes, that is why I, I Bernard keeps on referring to my Facebook post, and 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 that was my post because as at that time, my constituents who are largely into business. They were suffering, yeah. and I needed to act as an as a, as a member of parliament. And with this new tax, and and and, and 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 in doing that, <laughs> you 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 should have applauded me for for saying that. But today, but, but at the end of the day, you go in uh, on the reverse and right, I have not done that. Action. I have not done that. Ah, but that's why you did as, I am as only, MPs. I am time, only hoping these new taxes were I am, not. Oh, there. I am only hoping that the new taxes would generate revenues How? for government to continue to support key uh, 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 sectors of our economy. All right. Noted. Education, trade, agriculture, mm. and to support you our know businessmen. The, the Swiss government and others are tol telling you that you should drop some of your policy initiatives. Like because, what? Be, because why are you asking me? I should be the one to tell you which policy to do. That's uh, what the white person You said. keep on saying it on national television. That the white man the, says drop the white man, policies. the white man who represents his government. You Senate, should have asked the one bank president. You should have asked him. Okay. No, what policies are you going to, to put a permanent ah. person at your ministry? Is that, is that not to tell you that? Is that not? Is that, is that not? Is that not? Is that, is that not your role? Americans are right. generally to put somebody at the ministry of finance okay. so, that, so that they can manage so, the economy Boni, of Ghana. So Moroni somewhere comes to yeah, you. Yeah, that. Decides that today, doctor, doctor should wear black. And you, not you, 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 not tired, not tired. But they are the same people you run to when you need. No, 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 they are not coming to the So they cannot advise you. Not tired, not tired. You went around, not tired. You went around. How would you describe, not tired? How would you describe these new taxes? They are very regressive. 